In this video, we're going to be talking about the odd and interesting beliefs of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they're different than most other religions out there because of their beliefs that differ from the rest of the entirety of Christianity. And we're talking strange things like they don't believe that you can have a blood transfusion because they believe that drinking blood is against God. And of course, drinking blood is against God. But one wonders how they did the math on that where they try to equivocate drinking actual blood with receiving a blood transfusion in order to save your life. I mean, this is a big, big difference. Now, we're not making fun of the Jehovah's Witnesses here. I mean, there are people who do make fun of Jehovah's Witnesses and say, oh, look at how stupid they are. They believe only 144,000 people can go to heaven. How dumb are they? And people will tell me this, and I'll say, well, Actually, in Revelation 7 and Revelation 14, it says that the 144,000 are in heaven. And the people are like, wait, really? That's in the Bible? Well, how do you refute that? And I said, well, you shouldn't be making fun of other people's religions unless you've studied it for yourself. And we shouldn't be bashing other people's religions anyways just because that's wrong. So the intent of this video is not to bash the Jehovah's Witnesses, but it is to expose some of their false and erroneous teachings that are leading many people astray and leading many people down the wrong road. And in fact, in this case, not receiving blood transfusions are actually killing people because they don't receive them when they need them. And in fact, there's actual reports of parents or others stealing Jehovah's Witnesses from hospitals and getting arrested and sent to jail later for it because they didn't want them to receive blood transfusions. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses will say, you know, only God can give life, and blood is the sign of life, and so we can't give life to others, but we give life to others all the time. Every time you go to surgery on your deathbed and the doctor saves your life, he's giving you life. Now, Jesus said the greatest gift you can give someone is to lay down your life for them. So with a blood transfusion, you're literally laying down your life for them and saving their life. You're not giving life. Only God gives life, but you are saving their life. And there's nothing in the Bible that says you can't do that. And it's not equivocal to drinking blood. This is one of the bizarre teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. And as far as I know, they're the only ones who believe it. Sadly, while Jehovah's Witnesses do believe in Jesus, they're not a Christian religion because they have a false version of who Jesus is. The Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the Trinity, which is the core teaching of all Christianity. If you don't believe in the Trinity, you're not even a Christian because this is what Christians believe. We believe that God is one, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, meaning we believe that Jesus is divine, the divine eternal Son of God. And Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe this. They believe that Jesus is just an archangel. Yeah, that's right. You heard me correctly. They believe that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. And you'll see this in their own literature. And if you ask them about it, well, where does it say that in the Bible? They'll say, well, in the Bible, it says that Jesus will descend with the shout of an archangel. And I say, okay, where does it say that Jesus is Michael the Archangel? And they have to admit that that's not there, but they make the inference from this passage that Jesus is Michael the Archangel, even though it says it nowhere in the Bible. And the reality is that symbolic and descriptive language are used everywhere. Jesus is said to have white woolly hair and eyes of fire and many other descriptive terms, but that doesn't mean he's actually those things or anything else that is associated with those things, like a demon that comes from fire or anything else. The reality is, in Hebrews chapter 1, it says, let all the angels worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Now, of course, the New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, they've changed that passage so it doesn't say that, and they've changed countless passages that all talk about worshiping Jesus in some way. And there are plenty of passages that talk about worshiping Jesus in the Bible. Now, if you ever talk to a Jehovah's Witness, the central discussion that they're going to have with you usually is on the Trinity, because they believe that they are right and all of the rest of Christianity is wrong, just as Mormons do and a few other little sects that don't accept the Trinity. But the majority of Christians and all Christians for 2,000 years have accepted the Trinity. And in fact, they have a whole Watchtower magazine called Should You Believe in the Trinity? And it's one of the most dishonest uh, publications I've ever read by them. And, and again, this is not meant to be mean, just accurate, but they have some of the worst 
research ever in history of any religion. They literally just try to prove their points, even if it's not accurate. And in fact, we're having an interview very soon with an ex-Jehovah's Witness who worked in the research history department of the Watchtower. And the more he researched, the more he realized he could not prove the doctrines. And instead of just making them up or, you know, turning corners or closing a blind eye, he actually ended up leaving the Watchtower and becoming a Christian and then eventually becoming a Catholic Christian. But if you read these, you're going to see that they quote the earliest Christians in here and they say that the earliest Christians did not believe in the Trinity. But we have three volumes of the earliest Christians and all their actual writings. And what I did is I went through their watchtower, I looked up their quotes, then I looked up the actual quotes, and the amount of proof texting and the amount of changing it around and even putting things in there that were not said, literally just putting your own interpretations on of what was said, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. And we're not going to do that. We're going to have a whole separate video for that. But the bottom line is they don't believe in the Trinity and they are staunch about that. And they believe that anyone who does is evil. Speaking of, they believe that the Holy Spirit is God's impersonal active force. He's not God the Holy Spirit. He's not a person in himself. He's just an active force of God, impersonal active force, even though the Bible uses personal terms to describe the Holy Spirit in he and his and speaks to me as a person. All personal pronouns always referring to the Holy Spirit, but they believe that it's just his active force. Now, going back to Jesus, this is another thing that I really have a hard time understanding why they believe this, but they don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead physically. They don't believe he really rose from the dead. They believe it was his body was just a spirit or a phantom or a ghost. It wasn't really Jesus. And even when he went to the apostles and they said, oh my gosh, it's a ghost. He said, touch my body. See that it's me. Does a ghost have flesh and bones? Hey, do you have any fish here to eat? May I have some fish? And it says he ate it in their presence. Now, he went through many things to say, hey, this is a physical resurrection. This is really me. It's a corporal body. And I bring these things up to Jehovah's Witnesses all the time when I speak to them. And they say, well, Jesus didn't actually mean that. He was just mm, telling them that because he needed to increase their faith and they had a hard time believing. So he was just telling them that he had a body, but he actually didn't. And that's when I tell the Jehovah's Witnesses and I say, so Jesus was lying to them in order to help their faith. Jesus can lie? And they have a hard time answering this, but the reality is they don't believe that Jesus had a physical body. And of course, this is a Gnostic heresy. And if you want to see these passages where Jesus has a physical body, John 20, 26 through 27, and Luke 24, 36 to 43 are some passages you can start with that he actually himself says that he has a physical body. Now, coming back to the 144,000, this is one of the peculiar and unique passages that only Jehovah's Witnesses believe. They're the only ones that I know of in any religion that believe the 144,000 go to heaven. In fact, only 144,000 people can go to heaven. The rest of the people, if you're good, and if you're a faithful Jehovah's Witness only, then you will come back down to a paradise on earth. Otherwise, you will be destroyed in the ground forever because Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in hell. They don't believe in eternal hell. They don't believe in what Christians believe in regard to hell. They believe that you simply cease to exist and your body goes to the grave, decomposes, and you're just gone forever. And you can go to part one if you're interested and see how Charles Taz Russell, their founder, he had a hard time with hell. Even since he was a little boy, he had a hard time believing in hell. So once he found someone who didn't believe in hell, he latched onto it and then brought it into his his own religion that he started. Now, it's interesting because I ask Jehovah's Witnesses when I talk to them on the streets or when they come to my door and I say, are you one of the 144,000? And they always have a different answer. Nobody seems to believe the same thing. And this is interesting too, because it's congruent with other things that the Watchtower itself has said. And if you don't know, the Watchtower is like the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. The, like, they believe that they're the only true religion on earth. They believe that they're God's mouthpiece in a sense, and he works through them. And the governing body is the the watchtower. But the watchtower has said, and 
uh, way back when, that up until 1920, if you were not born after 1920, you were not part of the 144,000. You couldn't have been because they were all in heaven at that time. But their second president, Joseph Rutherford, he said that it was 1935. If you were born after 1935, you wouldn't be in heaven. But even around the turn of the century, around the year 2000, you had 9,000 people, even including in the governing body of the hierarchy of the Jehovah's Witnesses, claiming to be one of the 144,000. So this is literally all over the map, and it, it, they don't seem to have any sense of uniformity of belief on this. And I always ask Jehovah's Witnesses, who are so excited to come back to the paradise on earth, and if you read their magazines, you'll see that all of their magazines have like covers of people running through fields and petting lions and eating grapes and cuddling with jaguars and <laughs> all of these pictures about them having the perfect paradise on earth. And this is what they're so excited to come back to. It's like what Adam and Eve had before they fell. It was a perfect paradise, like in the Garden of Eden. And they're excited to come back to that. And I said, I'm not excited for that. I wouldn't want to come back to this earth and live here for billions of billions and trillions of trillions of years. I want to go to heaven with God. I want to see my God face to face. And I asked them, don't you want a relationship with God? Like, don't you want to go to heaven with him? And they say, oh, well, that can't happen, you know, so we're going to come back to a paradise. But I was like, feel free to come back to a paradise if you want to. I'm going to heaven. I want to go see Jesus. I want to jump in his arms and, you know, run through the fields of heaven with him and have an eternal relationship, that beatific vision with him. I was like, if you come down, I mean, you can pat as many lions as you want, eat as many grapes as you want. You are going to be bored. I mean, eat your favorite food every day for the next 60,000 years. You're going to be bored. Everything fades unless you have God only. Only God can fulfill that hole in our heart, and only heaven is the eternal happiness that we've all been waiting for. So I feel bad for Jehovah's Witnesses that they don't even know that they can go to heaven. That, that, that's why I say they don't even know the real God. They don't even know the real Jesus. They don't even have the right set of doctrines. That's why when Mormons and other religions say, oh, all you need to do is believe in Jesus to be a Christian, that is absolutely 100% false. Because many people believe in Jesus, but they believe in the wrong Jesus. Like, Muslims believe in Jesus, but it's the wrong Jesus. And many people, like the Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, for that matter, have the wrong Jesus. And in order to get to heaven, you have to know Jesus, the real Jesus, the right Jesus, the one who lived 2,000 years ago and claimed to be the divine Son of God. And consequently, Jehovah's Witnesses have a whole host of of odd beliefs that nobody else believes. And they come to these bizarre conclusions of things like you can't celebrate birthdays because why? Well, when you ask them, they say, well, two birthdays were celebrated in the Bible and both of them were by evil people. By extension, all birthdays are evil. Now, the Bible never makes that conclusion. The Bible never actually says that. They're the ones drawing these false conclusions. And the Bible doesn't actually draw it for them. And so they have many other things, too. Like, they don't even celebrate Mother's Day. Mother's Day, they say, is a pagan origin. But nobody who celebrates Mother's Day actually is celebrating anything pagan, not worshiping any god. They're celebrating their mother. They're thanking them for life. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses will say, you can have mothers and Father's Day on every day of the week. You should be honoring your father and mother every day of the week. Of course you should. But we have special occasions to honor people who deserve to be honored in this world. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I feel so bad for Jehovah's Witnesses who have been so brainwashed into thinking that general holidays are evil. They try on their website to show how St. Valentine's Day was evil when in fact it's celebrating not a pagan god, but a Catholic saint. Now I can see if you're Jehovah's Witness and you don't want to celebrate a Catholic saint, okay, fine. But we're celebrating the life of someone who gave up his life for Jesus, who died out of love for Jesus and was martyred for Jesus. And that's worth celebrating. We're not celebrating anything pagan or anything like that. It's all about someone, a Christian, who loves Jesus. And of course, most people know that they don't celebrate Christmas. They don't celebrate Easter. They don't salute the flag because they don't believe in worshiping flags and nations and things like that. They're continually just draw these bizarre conclusions that have no truth in reality. I mean, all of these things that they claim are not, in fact, we're not worshiping a flag when we salute the flag. They say you should have allegiance to God alone, only God. And I say, well, of course God should be our ultimate allegiance, but does that mean that we can't have allegiance to other things? Does that mean we can't be 
devoted to other things, like your wife, like your husband, like your country, like your children, like many other things, just because they're on a lesser level doesn't mean that God is not almighty, supreme, eternal, almighty Lord and God. He is. But you can still be faithful to other things as well. It doesn't mean that it's worship. I mean, this is just silly. I, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, anybody who tries to say that certain holidays are idol worship because you're celebrating your mother or your father or a good Christian, what do you say to that? I mean, some of these things are... Yeah. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses will not go to the military, because, even though I do know some Jehovah's Witnesses who are in the military. It's the belief of Jehovah's Witnesses that you can't go to war, that war is bad, that there's no reason for war whatsoever, and that any good Christian should not be going to war. And of course, Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to read books from other religions. They're generally not allowed to read websites. They're probably not even allowed to watch this video. They're not allowed to watch or read things from other religions because they're going to be led astray. And that watchtower keeps a tight grip on their people through fear tactics, through guilt, through control, through many other things. And that's why, I mean, of course, if you only read your own religion's books, you're going to think that, oh, well, I have the truth. Everybody else is wrong. It's clear and obvious. But if you've never actually read something else on the other side, then you can't know that. It's literally just brainwashing, like Scientology or something. Now, some Jehovah's Witnesses will say, well, we already know we have the truth, so why read anything else? And I say every religion says that, but not every religion's correct. And 99.9% .9 of religions are not correct because there's only one true religion. So you better actually have a little bit of deeper intellectual honesty and start researching and looking up things. In fact, my Catholic faith was challenged by Jehovah's Witnesses, and I went and looked up my Catholic faith and found out that it was true. But I also, just in case, looked up Protestant religions, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and all of these other religions, just in case, because I wanted to go wherever the truth was. Even if it was a different religion than I was brought up with, I just want to follow Jesus in the church that he truly started. But Jehovah's Witnesses are known for their brainwashing techniques, their mind control, fear. And in fact, people who have left the Jehovah's Witnesses, who have finally been able to break free of the guilt and get out, they say they need sometimes years of counseling just to undo all the damage that has been done to them. Because when you're, when you leave, or if you want to leave, you are disfellowshipped, which unlike the Catholic Church, where someone can be excommunicated for something very grave and serious, we still talk to people who are excommunicated. If you're disfellowshipped in the Jehovah's Witness, your family doesn't talk to you, your friends don't talk to you, everyone treats you like the enemy, you are dead to everyone. And so you literally lose everything. So it's very, very difficult. And I know Jehovah's Witnesses who have been disfellowshipped and their families don't even know who they are anymore. And it's really, really, really sad. And in fact, I heard that the Jehovah's Witnesses, because there's a lot of abuse in the religion, has the highest dropout rate of any religion for those who are born into it. And if you'd like to see more on this, Leah Remini made a whole Scientology series on Netflix, and she exposes Scientology and the cult that it is. But she also did at least one show on Jehovah's Witnesses exposing it for the cult that it is. And she has a myriad of former Jehovah's Witnesses who left and share their stories, and it's heartbreaking. They just, so many of them all at once are all crying their eyes out because they have been so hurt, damaged, because they struggled so much, because their families don't talk to them anymore, because they were told that they're going to die and rot in the grave forever. No one's ever going to love them. And just the amount of guilt and fear that goes through this is very difficult for Jehovah's Witnesses. And most people don't understand that unless they are one. And then when you do leave, you literally are skeptical of everything because Jehovah's Witnesses have trained you and brainwashed you to think that you're right and everyone else is all wrong. They're all from the devil. They're all evil. All the churches are from Satan except ours. And for Mormons say the same thing. And you learn that in lesson one. Uh, when the missionaries come to your door. But the reality is, this is a very difficult thing. Well, if everything's evil, and I've left this because I think it's wrong, then everything's wrong. And many become atheists, many become agnostics, and they need our prayers. We need to pray for them. So many religions, so many Job's Witnesses, Mormons, Church of God, cults like that, they don't even know what they're born into. They don't even know better. Most of the times they haven't even researched these things, but for those who do... 
they they have their eyes open. And for those who come to Christianity and know Jesus Christ, as many, 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 many countless Jehovah's Witnesses have, they say they have an air of freedom. And in fact, I met a Jehovah's Witness couple recently who said that if you ever talk to any Jehovah's Witnesses, please tell them that our leaving has been the best thing ever. Our coming to the Catholic Church has literally been the best decision of our life. And that's hard, because the Jehovah's Witnesses teach that the Catholic Church is evil. It's from the devil. It's the harlot mother church mentioned in Revelation. So there's a lot of unbrainwashing to do, but these people said they've never, ever, ever been happier. And the person we're going to interview soon, who was an ex-witness who worked in the Watchtower, he has brought hundreds of witnesses out of the Watchtower, out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. He's helped thousands of people answer their questions, and he's brought dozens into the Catholic Church and many more dozens into other Christian denominations. But the fact is that there are people to help. If you're a Jehovah's Witness and you happen to be watching this and you're struggling, you're doubting, you know you're not allowed to doubt, you know you're not supposed to doubt, you feel like you're a bad person or your faith isn't as good as other people's because you're doubting. And this is what many former Witnesses and Mormons have said. But when you, sometimes doubting is good and it leads to finding the truth. If the Jehovah's Witnesses are the truth, then doubting, it's not a problem because you will find the truth and it will be reinforced. But if you keep looking and it's not being reinforced and bigger problems keep coming up, there's a good reason for that. Run away screaming into the night. The reality is there is only one truth. And it's, it didn't start in 1800 with the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons or the Church of God or the Seventh-day Adventists or the Church of Christ or the Pentecostals in 1900 or any of the thousands of religions that have literally started in the last 200 years. Those are not the Church of Jesus. Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. Jesus started a church 2,000 years ago. His church goes back 2,000 years. And if you do the history and the research, you find what church goes back 2,000 years, then you will have found the true church of Jesus Christ. Lastly, but not leastly, Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the soul. They don't believe in an eternal soul, which is why they don't believe in eternal hell. But this is a short, condensed understanding of what the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. If you would like to know more, you can check out our other videos on our YouTube, or you can check out our blog on our website, thecatholictruth.org. But definitely check out the show by Leah Remini on Jehovah's Witnesses. Also, if you would like more information uh, from one of the nephews, the president of the Jehovah's Witnesses, he had a nephew who left. I mean, one of the highest ranking people in the Jehovah's Witnesses ever left. He exposed the whole organization and he wrote a huge book exposing all their doctrines, their false theology, their sketchy history, and so much more. It's called Crisis of Conscience, the struggle between loyalty to God and loyalty to one's religion. And also, the Gentile Times Reconsidered, if you want to go really in depth and see why the Jehovah's Witnesses have predicted the world to end in 1914, 1918, uh, 1925, 1975, and literally many more times as well. You want to know why they can't get it right? Because their whole chronology is off on everything. And this book shows why all of their chronology is off. And so many Watchtower uh, people left the Jehovah's Witnesses after reading these books because they expose the truth. And the truth is what sets you free. If you want to see true stories that uh, of evangelization that I've had personally with Jehovah's Witness, I will put that above or I will put it at the end if I forget, but uh, check out that video on our stories with Jehovah's Witnesses, especially the last story in that video is a doozy. And one lady freaked out on me when I went to a kingdom hall and knocked on the door and evangelized them. Hmm, that was a doozy, so feel free to check that out. Please help share this video. If you liked it, please like it so other people can see it and like it. And the more you like it, the more you comment, and the more you share this on your platforms, the more it will get out there, even to Jehovah's Witnesses. Our Mormon video started like that, started with 30 views, and now it has 400,000 views because people shared it and shared it and shared it and commented and liked it, and it helped get the word out there to so many, and people have come back to the Catholic Church, and you can help us evangelize by sharing this video, by getting it out there. I give you permission, full permission from Catholic Truth to send this to your Jehovah's Witness relatives uh, and evangelize them. They will not watch it, but send it to them anyways because they send you stuff. And they give you magazines and they evangelize you and it's we who should be evangelizing the world. So please like, 
Subscribe if you haven't. If you love this video and you really want more great comment, please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell notification icon so you get these videos when they come out and check out our other folders. Go back and watch our videos so you can know your faith learn your faith, and love your faith. And of course, if you want to follow us, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or if you want to support us on PayPal, if you want to help our ministry grow and help us to reach countless more people for Christ, it's all below. Check it out. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your prayers for us. Thank you for our new patrons and new supporters. You help us to save souls and change lives. Thank you. Sincerely, and God bless you.